Mr. Jensen's hometown. The county has been working on Jensen time. And sometimes as a, as a rock singer, an MC, one has to lengthen the, the song until the walk catches up to the stage. But in the meantime, I ask you, are you ready for Jensen? Are you ready for Texas' own Jen Padalecki? It smelled good. Oh, they smell so good. They still have after all these years. Even in spite of the chicken wings and beer, they smell like gold. It's the must that Richard and I talk about. And we get you bottling up. I don't know how they do it, really. Did they ever tell you about the time that Jensen got fit for one of these things called an in-ear monitor that fits perfectly in your ear? The ear doctor came to set to fit his ear for an ear monitor. And the ear doctor had to take a knee, a small tear dropped his eyes and said, that's the most perfect ear canal I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now. Good people of Plano, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and all the surrounding counties, please, I want a big ass Texas all welcome Texas. for Jensen Ackles and Jared Cadillac. Thank you, Jared's boys. Thanks, Vinny. Thank you, Vinny. All right, all right, all right. Just 
so you guys are like, I thought we were in Dallas. <laughs> no! Just so we're very clear, this was a gift from a dear friend who works on the show. I didn't give that to you. Who's from Britain. <laughs> Do y'all see it? Yeah. <laughs> I think something's wrong with it. <laughs> is it dick batteries? What's happening? It is, the batteries are old. <laughs> I didn't charge them last night. Uh, hi guys. Yeah. Hi, uh, y'all. Apologies ahead of time. We're a little embarrassed. We both uh, oh, we wore our beards today. We didn't know we were <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Mom, sister, cousin, whoever's cheering. Uh, girl, girlfriend. Girlfriend. Thanks, girlfriend. Yeah. Show yourself. Who are you? After the show. After the show. Time stage. Girlfriend gay. Boyfriend gay. Yeah. Listen, whatever. I mean, I, yeah. love's love. Um, what's your shirt mean? What does it mean? Yeah, what's your shirt mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What does it mean? Ain't Texas. Here's Texas. And oh, this says, Ain't Texas. Ain't Texas. Oh. Although, what's, what's interesting is, is up here is these mountain ranges. <laughs> you got the Rockies. <laughs> and the Appalachians, right there. That's... And now I need a bat. And now I have regrets. Yeah. <laughs> regrets. Regrets. Okay. No regrets. No regrets. What's the next line? <laughs> this the sage in blue and I heard it deep in the heart of Texas. Sorry, apologies, apologies, guys. Um, all right, let's go ahead before we compare to discuss some more. That was phenomenal, Gordon. That was fantastic. Hey, real quick, can you, can I, are you taking requests? I have a request. Okay. Can you do all the states? Yeah! It's my favorite. <laughs> all 50 states? Or which, which, like, all of them? Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Connecticut, uh, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio. Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. Jerry Pedalecki, ladies and gentlemen. Like you said, do your times tables now. <laughs> the, the period. Is that the only thing you learned in school? Uh, is the only, only thing that stuck? As a matter of fact, <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> Without a doubt. Hi? 3.14159, this is 538. Is that cherry or apple? Thank you. Uh, there are people standing up going, like, what are they talking about? I have a question. Uh, so, let's start with my side, which is always the strong side. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, hey, I felt the mountains, I know. 
in the words of Kimmy Lovato, sorry not sorry. Let's go over here. What? <laughs> you know, your mom's here. <laughs> hi, Mom. Where are you? Where's my mom and dad? Or, where, where is them? Oh, hi. By the way, so, um, please be kind. Uh, the, the OG uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ackles and Mr. and Mrs. Padalecki are here right now. Um, thank you. Th so thank you from one person. <laughs> one out of a thousand is still better than zero out of a thousand. So kudos, and what did y'all do wrong? How did we not, uh, just uh, All right, let's go ahead and start off. Actually, they're thinking right now, they're like, well, two out of three isn't bad. <laughs> I had so many better jokes. I, hey, you know, um, so weirdly, we, we, uh, we went on a little world tour, uh, world tour and I found out that I was afraid of elevators, so now I'm taking steps to avoid them. <laughs> Your bad jokes have reached new heights. <laughs> Steps to avoid them. I get no respect. I get no respect. Understood. Understood. I'm sorry. He's usually much better. He's, he's nervous in front of his mom and dad. But he brought his mountains. <laughs> all right, let's get all right, started. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, bringing it back. How are you? Hi, good. Hi. Hi. Good. Hi. So, have y'all ever considered racing the Impalas once this series is over? And if so, who do you think will win? <laughs> hey, take it easy. Uh, racing the Impalas. Well, I'll tell you who will win. Whoever wins is the person sitting behind the, the steering wheel of uh, the one with the 502 yeah. on the hood. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's only one that has a, uh, a big block V8, so I, I'm fairly certain that's the one that will, that'll win. However, uh, when we when we do um, quickly escape with them, uh, the show's over. <laughs> And, uh, and get them down to, uh, uh, to Austin. There is a, uh, there's a little, a little road course out there called Circuit of the Americas. Maybe we'll go give her a test. Thank you. I like your crown, by the way. What, what's up with it? You're 50? Yes. Bravo! Happy birthday. It's all right. Hi there. Hi. Um, first off, thank you both for just existing. More so just here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold on one second. Right? You can thank those four people over there. That's I just did. So my question. You know what? You're welcome. Especially thank you, for, thank you, Jensen. Appreciate it. Um, my question is: So you both have your bar and your brewery, 
What made you guys decide to open those establishments? Beer. Well, yeah, obviously. Obviously. But, like, what made you feel like, you know what, that's what we want to do? Because we appreciate it, trust me, we do. Uh, I think for me to start, so when I was mom, dad, shut your ears. <laughs> shut your ears. Uh, when I was not 21 yet and I had my fake ID, <laughs> shut your ears. Uh, I grew up. I never had a fake ID. <laughs> I had a At real least. ID. That's an Eric. That was my buddies who looked like me who was over 21. <laughs> Fair enough. Well played. Well played. Um, At least you uh, never got arrested. I'm just kidding. No. Oh, oh my God. No, no, no. He never. He never, ever, ever, ever. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> ooh, uh, It, uh, it really boiled down to uh, profit margins, uh, and the investment uh, at that time, there was, uh, there, there was a real need for that in the marketplace, and so uh, uh, we, we really kind of uh, broke it down to what it was going to be from a capital investment standpoint, from a return standpoint, um, and, and then it just really, the numbers made sense uh, for that particular, could have been anything, it could have been toilet paper. Uh, but. It, it just, oh, wait, did you invest in and I, I didn't because the margins weren't there. Um, but again, looking back at those numbers and really crunching them, yeah. but really, it just yeah. kind of, that was that was the one thing that that, had, that really stood out to, to both of us. And there's a there's a law that prohibits one manufacturer uh, owning a, 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 a retail space. So you can't have, it's a three-tiered system, you can't have that, it's only one, there can be a manufacturer, there can be a distributor, and there can be a retail space. He decided to take one, I decided to take the other. We're just looking for the third Winchester to get it distributed. I'll, I'll be the third Winchester. That's how you can be! I'm the best if you want. I'm down. I'm locked out, what happened? <laughs> Thank you for your question. I hope you see you I got you, I got you, I got you. Sure. He's got some mountains of his own. Uh, it's like Texas Hill Country. Somebody just said, Somebody just said, Show us! Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I live in Texas Hill Country. And I know how Amen. beautiful it is. question that I hope doesn't put you guys too much on the spot, but what would you say is the most influential thing that your parents taught you that you're passing on to your children now? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> most influential thing? All right. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll. You want to take this first? Yeah, I'll take this first. Huh? Um, so... I'll, I'll. You want me to take this? No, I mean, if you want to, but I can No, no, I mean, go ahead. All right. Um, but we could, you know, we could stall a little bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, my, my, I'm a very lucky dude. Um, I'm a very lucky guy, and I'm a very lucky husband and father and cousin and best friend. And, yeah. But I think outside of the, the uh, maybe exterior aspects that make me lucky, you know, I, I was born tall and white and male. And I mean, like, there, there are things, obviously, like, I, I had some good fortune being born. The, 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 the world we live in, this, the, the country we live in, is made for tall white guys, you know? Um, and, I, and I'm very grateful and aware of that. Um, but beyond pull up, that, pull up, 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 ground, 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 mayday, mayday. I'll 
outside of out, my, my outside of whatever whatever I look like uh, on the outside. I feel like, it's like no, 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 I'm not playing. Up. My my parents told me that I should do the best I can. Like my my parents uh, sacrificed a lot. They're in the room, so it's weird to ask the question because they're 50 feet away from me. Uh, but they gave everything. Uh, they gave everything they had. Uh, they didn't have the money I have. Uh, they didn't have the, the good fortune I have, where there were a, a thousand plus people looking at me. But they gave more to me and to well to my brother and my sister and me. And that's correct, Emma. And I know that because my mom's a music teacher and my, my dad's a grandmother. Right? So they gave, they gave every single ounce of their being to my brother my sister and me, and uh, I hope to do as much of a similar job for my three children as possible. <clears throat> Sorry for the turbulence there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> looks like we will be landing ahead of the schedule. At a different airport. At a different airport. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will. Uh, I, I could. I could give you a laundry list of, of things that I hope to emulate uh, to my children that was uh, impressed upon me uh, as 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 a child and, and a young adult. Um, I will. I will. I will just pick one from that very long list, and that is the gift of laughter. Uh, that was. There were, there were always uh, uh, jokes, uh, albeit not good ones. <laughs> um, but, uh, but there was always, there was constant laughter in the house, and, and I hope to, uh, to raise my children in a house uh, of equal laughter. Thank you, Thank you Hi. Hi. I'm Oris. Um, I'm Jared. <laughs> this <is> Tom. <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, um, when did you guys realize that acting was the career for you? Because as someone that's about to go into uh, university, it's something that I wonder if I'm sure about right now. When do you guys realize that this is something that you want to do for the rest of your lives? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I've thought about this before. Um, I. This sounds strange. I don't recommend acting as a career. I recommend it. I don't. I recommend it as a passion, as a vocation, as a hobby, and if it starts out as something that you love and you need and turns into a career, then great. <clears throat> but there are actors and actresses out there who have changed my life and my career that you couldn't, you wouldn't know the name of, you know? So I, I, I say follow your passion. Um, you know, there are bills to pay, obviously. Uh, but just because we have 307 episodes of television under our belts together, and we'll have 307 episodes of television together, doesn't mean that we're better actors or act, you know, actors actresses than somebody in this audience. So maybe somebody chooses to do theater, maybe they do commercials, maybe they do voiceovers, maybe they do movies, maybe they do nothing. And maybe they tell stories to their kids or their kids' friends behind a campfire. Um, I feel like it needs to be a passion and a vocation first, and then if there's a way to pay your bills with it, great. Um, but you know, I, I ate ramen for several years. Um, after it was a career, because it wasn't a career yet, it was still my hobby, my passion, um, <clears throat> my drive. So for me, and Ackles has his own uh, opinion as well, for me, acting was always what I needed to do. I just happened to be lucky enough and fortunate enough and blessed enough to get paid for it. 
I think figure out what it is. Yeah, I think I think figure out what it is about that the the industry that really speaks to you that you really uh, that you really love. Um, because nowadays, in this, in this day and age, the industry is completely different than, not completely, but it's wildly different than when we first started out. Um, you know, for, for us, it was movies or television. And that was, that, or, uh, or theater, if you wanted to be an actor. It was basically those three mediums. Now you've got YouTube channels, and you've got, uh, uh, you've got independent film festivals, and you've got, you've got yeah, you've got, there's so many different platforms and, and mediums that you can utilize to tell stories. And it, it, if it's telling stories or, uh, or writing stories or performing certain characters, um, then figure out a way to do that. Uh, and like Jared said, do it because you love it. Don't do it because you think you're gonna, you, you should get paid for it. I think as soon as you start going like, I wanna be famous or I wanna get paid, uh, then you start losing focus of what you're really doing it for. Um, so figure out what that is, focus on that, find a way to do it, and if you get paid for it, cha-ching! <laughs> Congrats on college! Hi! Hey guys, uh, my Hi. name's Taylor. Uh, my question's actually for Jensen. Sorry, Jensen. Oh, <laughs> found him. <laughs> that was really dramatic. <laughs> yes, Jared, it was. My uh, chair flattened. And this is why we can't have nice things. That's why we can't have nice things. So I love your voiceover work as Jason Todd in Under the Red Hood. <laughs> your big finale speech which always brings me to tears every time I watch it. So what was like, where did you pull from for that beautiful speech? Um <clears throat> to go back and figure and try to remember that. Um, it was, uh, I mean, doing something in that, uh, in that medium, again, here's a completely different, going back to the earlier question, here's something completely different, you know, you can do voiceovers. Uh, you know, my, my father's been, uh, had a career in voiceover work and, and, and that kind of stuff for quite, quite a long time. Which, He's a man of many talents, but that certainly is one of one of his his uh, his great ones, and, and he does very well with it. Uh, and I, I I thank him for whatever he taught me or whatever I got from him uh, that gave me um, the, the the ability or or even the confidence to go and do a job like Under the Red Hood. Um, that being said, it's a totally different process than what we do on Supernatural or what most people do in television or, or film. I mean, this is me in a recording booth just reading the lines with no other actor there to play opposite, uh, not hearing uh, somebody else reading the other lines. Literally, I just go line by line, recording it three different ways. Now, that's really weird <laughs> when you come from, somebody, from, from a, uh, a set where you're rehearsing scenes and you're trying to make them as realistic as possible. That's hard. Yeah, and, and um, so I remember, uh, you know, doing some of those, like, those long speeches and just using my personal, uh, you know, life moments to kind of pull from and, and, and use that to, to give me emotion or uh, direction on how I wanted to, to perform it. But again, it was, it was interesting because you couldn't really get into a scene or get into a rhythm with, with the character or the other characters because there was no one there to do that. It was just you alone in a booth. Um, I will say though that as odd as it was, I have done a few more that aren't out yet. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So I was wondering if somebody were to sit down and watch the show from start to finish, what's one theme or theme you would want them to take away from the show? Uh, Texas. <laughs> v. 
via Kansas. <laughs> no, it would, it would probably be uh, always keep eating. but uh, was sort of reinforced from my time on the show, which isn't over yet, um, is that these guys did the best they could. It's almost the same I just talked about my folks, who I think are somewhere over there. Um, <laughs> they just did the best job they could with what they had. You know, they just, you don't need to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. Uh, just do the best you can do. Work hard, be true, be honest, be loyal, um, sacrifice, and just do the best you can. And that's kind of what the boys went a bit too far maybe sometimes, you know? I mean, I can say uh, uh, Jared doesn't want to be Lucifer ever. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm talking so high. <laughs> uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like the boys did, the boys being the Winchester boys, uh, which I guess I'm one, uh, always did the best job they could. <clears throat> so I feel like that's what I would want to live with and pass on. Yeah, it is, it's, it's the good fight. I think that's a, a big, uh, you know, through line with this, with this show is these, these brothers, they, they, they fight for each other and they fight for what they believe is right. And, and it's, uh, and, and I, I do love that message. In fact, I, since you're here, uh, and Dad, you may not remember ever telling me this, but when I left, when I moved out at the age of 18 and, and uh, moved to California, uh, there were some great pieces of advice. One of them was, uh, make sure you stand for something, because if you don't, you'll fall for anything. Woo! And, and I believe that the, the, the brothers, the Winchester brothers, they, they fight to stand for something. And I, I, I love that about the story in this world and these characters. They, they, they fight for what they believe in. So. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name's Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. I'm Jared. Hi, Jared. This is Hi, Jensen. Jensen. Hi, nice to meet you guys. You see Billy? Thank you. See Mike's over there. Great. So, yeah. The whole gang's here. Awesome. I'm really excited. Um, so, we saw at the end of last season that Chuck kind of undid a lot of what Sam and Dean have done over the last 14 years. What would be the most difficult thing, emotionally or physically, for the boys to face again if they had to, and why? I think the most difficult thing that the boys will have to face is, um, Why'd you repeat the question? <laughs> it's like, they ask us, when do we get interviewed? The interviewer is off camera, and they'll say, um, you know, what is the most, the, what is the thing that the, the boys, the most difficult thing that they'll have to face in the new season? And if, and if you could just repeat the question into the camera, that'd be great. And you did that just now. <laughs> what would be the most? Here's, here's the deal. All right, what's your answer? Well, here's the, here's the point. If somebody's like, hey, what's the scariest thing that the boys can face? And I say, bears. <laughs> then, it's, then people will see like videos of me saying, this? That's scary, man. And it'll be like a GIF or something. There's no context. GIF! 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 GIF is peanut butter! Yeah. Exactly! It could be peanut butter as well. No! No! It can't! No! 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 <laughs> the most difficult thing. So, um, Jess and I finished uh, season 14 on March 26th in Vancouver. We had a couple weeks with our wives and kids and family and friends and homes and jobs. You know, um, and we went around Europe 
and then around Australia, well, around Dubai, then around Australia, then went back to Los Angeles and had a several hour meeting with our producers and writers um, and sometimes directors. Uh, and so Jensen and I know how the show is going to end. Talk amongst yourselves. Write this down. Um, <laughs> We're not gonna, I'm not gonna, well, I will absolutely tease you. You watch you try. You know, um, I feel like, I, I'm not gonna give, I'm, I'm not gonna spoil the end of the show. It means too much to me, it's been too long. I'm not gonna reveal the ending. But I'll I will, I'll tell you whatever. Just write it down. Uh, but I'll, I'll say Bumpins, I already forgot, so... <laughs> At least you're pretty. Uh, I'll say... <laughs> I, uh, I will say that um, the last scene of Supernatural... I'm not going to say it. I'm just saying that with, that will be the most... Uh-huh, and then? Uh, no, I don't know. I, I... Pull up, I'm gonna pull up. Nice to see you. Jason. You can just buckle your seatbelts, stow your tray tables. We're going to be experiencing some turbulence. <laughs> um, the, the most... Mm. There's some... I, I, I would not like to deal with the Leviathans anymore. I think I'm happy that we put those to bed. I hope those don't come back. Uh, I, uh... You put them to bed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they're sleeping? Mm -hmm. <laughs> For how many years? Many. <laughs> uh... What would be... You know what? I would like to have another crack at Hookman. Do y'all know the story of Hookman? Or, or, or the story of uh, our episode of Hookman? Um, no, our, the, honest episode, the honest story was we shot the pilot, we shot Mundigo, and then we shot Hookman. So nothing had aired yet, Supernatural had not aired, and, and there were some things they wanted to tie up. And so Hookman was the third filmed episode of Supernatural that would aired as the eighth, seventh or eighth. Um, because we had to go back and reshoot a bunch of stuff. Now I go back and watch them, I'm like, this is a good episode. I don't know, they were, like, I think it was one of those, they were trying to show picked up, and, um, so we had to shoot, because we got jumped, right? What? You talking to me this whole time? Um, Bookman was one of my favorite episodes to watch, is one of the stories that I uh, tell and enjoy being told, you know, or I'm, I'm around campfire or something. But it was a it's a funny situation way back in the day, which was a Wednesday. But yeah, I'm trying to think of some other like you know, it'd be nice to to kill Yellow Eyes again, uh, <laughs> or or uh, Ruby. <laughs> It's fine. We'll just take a tap. That's no, fine. No, 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 we're good. I'm fine. It's, I'm not it's drunk. Fine. He's had it. It's fine. We'll just, yeah, I'll just tap out if you did. That's great. Thanks. Seriously, Ruby. No, no, no. We're good. It's fine. Uh, I think she said Luby, uh, like the cafeteria. Yeah. My bad. My bad. My, my, my ears. Yeah. Uh, it's all right. It's, it's fine. Cool. I'm gonna go stretch. Uh, but, you know, it's fine. We're good. We're just... Cool, cool. What do you know about that? Chicken fried steak at Luby's. That's... A little Luan platter. Little Luan platter. 
I've had so many weird hit by this one. Uh, good times. Good times. Um, the, I, I would say if there was one thing that we've dealt with in all of the 307 episodes of Supernatural that we've filmed, if there was one thing that I would really love to not have to deal with again, that would be the bees. <laughs> yeah, I could do without the bug episode ever, ever again. If, if those come back, I, I'm out. <laughs> you know what? I would I, the, literally the, the, the most uncomfortable I have ever been, or the least comfortable I've ever been, no, was the was the spitting thing, where there was the, the yeah. guy who was like siren, and he had a oh, like, yeah. blink on me, and it's just a man on my mouth. It was nasty. And I have a weird thing about spit. Like, if you punch me in the face, I'll be like, what's wrong with you? Like, what's going on? You spit on me, I'll kill you. <laughs> I mean it. Like, I have a weird, it's a weird thing. You can kick me in the shins, you know. You can hit me in the crotch. I'll be like, whoa, 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 what's going on? It's, it's true. I, when I talk to him, I don't face him. Just the in the, in the off chance that a little thing comes out. I mean, it's, it's I'm like this. Hey, Jared, listen. Uh, <laughs> what I was just thinking about, maybe what we're doing. Uh, like no, nope, I swear it wasn't. Okay. Wait. <laughs> Dude, what's up? What's up? Nothing. I'm good. Okay. Just looks, that wasn't spit, right? That was. Your... And this is coming from somebody who, do you remember the, the, when you killed the hellhound and that, it was like, you were laying on your back and you sliced it over? I killed the hellhound? Yeah. Yeah, you did. You know why? Because you're not a loose chester. Nor are you, good sir. Well played. <laughs> so the, the, the what was the question? What are we talking about? What makes you uncomfortable? I don't know. Is that, did we come close to answering any of um, all of your questions? Yes. I hate getting spit on. Thank you. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't the question, but there you go. She's like, I asked which highway to take the sandwich. <laughs> Misha, what's one thing that can make him so happy he gets sent into the empty? And he said, Sam Regine saying like they miss him, happy birthday, Merry Christmas. Will you, will you say that first sentence one more time for me? Huh? You, you asked Misha what makes him happy and getting into the empty or something? N no, I, um... <laughs> what makes him happy? Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, no, no. Sorry, it, it, it's like a weird echo. Okay. Um, and he... Um, that's what he had said. So I was wondering if, like, this is not Sam Regine would do anything that would, you know, make me, um, make me so happy, like, say they miss him or show some type of gratitude for all the things that he's done for them. I mean, Castiel. No, yeah, 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 we, yeah, we got it. Thank you. No, we got it. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I think one of the, one of the things that I enjoy most about Supernatural, unfortunately, is that, well, I don't want to say unfortunately. Um, I feel like if, Cat, and I, I'm saying this out of the blue, um, if Castiel were to pass away again, I guess, and go to the MT, I feel like the way we would show Castiel's gratitude would be to keep doing what we're doing. You know, like, I don't think it, it, it's something, I think the way the Winchester brothers have, have lived has been, you know, if you lose somebody, you keep on fighting the fight. You keep on doing the best you can. There's no time to grieve. And it's, I don't think it's a good, 
Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it for a human being that lives on the planet Earth uh, outside of television. Um, but I feel like there's not a lot of grieving for the Winchester brothers. It's sort of like you cry for 20 seconds and you, you get up and you move forward. Um, and I feel like that's the way Sam and Dean Winchester show their gratitude, is by continuing to risk their lives and, and work hard to make the world safer. I love you, Jack. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, I think it's uh, you know the best way to honor them is to to make to, to keep doing what you think would make them the proudest. Um, you know what is it they say? Get busy living or get busy dying. So I don't think I don't think the the, the brothers uh, have a, a give up mentality or a well since we lost Cass what's the point mentality. I think they've had their ups and downs, but I think it, when it comes when it really comes down to it, the best way that they can. Uh, make sure that the lives that they have lost along the way weren't lost in vain is to continue fighting what we were all fighting for. Thank you. Hello, boys. Hello, boys. <laughs> I'm Sandra, and I've traveled all the way from Norway to be here this weekend. Wait, which way? <laughs> um, traveled from Norway. So not Southway? <laughs> not Southway. I'm the person from Shilkenes. Earlier, if you remember. That was you. Yeah, that was me. You watch your mouth. <laughs> Alright, so my question for you guys is, if you had the chance to change anything about the show, like a little detail, an episode, a character, or even a, an entire season, what would it be? It would be set in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Or it, even in Tromsø, maybe. In where? Tromsø. God bless you. Watch your mouth. Remember Trumsa from one of the episodes? God bless you. Watch your mouth. I like that you don't know where it is. Uh, <laughs> um, I always wished that, I mean, it's a small detail, but I always wished my brother wasn't so short. We do this thing sometimes where we'll get his bow legs and straighten them out, and he's my height. Honestly, there's a bit of like, um, you know, if I'm here and he's here, we'll straighten his legs out, and he's tall again, and we'll straighten his legs out. Oh, he's right there. I didn't know he was. Well, he can say. Um, maybe more trips to the barber shop. Uh, it's, it's, it's like having a sheepdog in a car. There, there's not a shop back out there that can get it all up. True story. True story. Um, Guten Tag. <laughs> or, what, what is Norwegian for thank you? Talk! Uh, God bless Calm you. Calm down. God bless you. Watch your mouth. You, you can say talk. I feel like space lighting. Talk. Talk to you. No, we're asking you to talk. What is it? How do you say thank you? Thank you is talk. 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 Or tusen talk. Tusen talk. Don't do that. Don't say that stuff. God bless you. I feel like I need to go wash my mouth out with soap now. Tusen talk. Tusen talk. Tusen talk. Tusen talk. Thanks for coming all the way from Norwegian. Pretty awesome. Pretty special. I really thought you were going to be. Uh, you, missed, you missed a Jared one there. She was like, I came all the way from Norway. I so thought you were going to go, No way! I said, 
But you missed it. You missed it. So I took it. Just knowing how embarrassed he was going to be after I told him what he was talking about. Here's the truth. Here's the actual story. I'm gonna say it. Uh, I'm I'm not a smoker, um, but we had gone to a charity event and Eddie Vedder had played um, with himself and the guitar and some of the things. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we, after the after the event is over, I'm talking to I think Adam Sam or something. Like there, there, it's it's like maybe sixty of us. We had no business being there. No we were there. really not famous enough to be at this no, at this no, event, but no. uh, there we were. And and Eddie Vedder comes up to talk to whomever I'm talking to. I think it was like Sandler and another person who maybe was. David Spade or something. Um, and he comes up to like say hi to his buddies. I happen to be in the group. And he's and he's smoking a cigarette. And I'm I'm like, play cool, play cool, play cool, play cool. Hey, is that real? And he's like, huh? I'm standing next to him and I'm like, what did he just say? Is that real? Like, and I, I and there, there was. It was like it was like a vapor cloud of just of just anything cool that resided in Jared's body just left. And I, I was just looking at this shell of a person. Hey, is that is that real? Yeah. yeah is, that, hey, is that real? Yeah. You mind if I? You mind if I? Uh, do some of it or something? I mean, I'm no picky or whatever, but I'll do some too. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. No, man, you can keep it. True story. And this is what I did then. I'm like, Thanks, Eddie. But, but, but he's over there. Throw the cigarette now. I have a cigarette. Oh my gosh, I couldn't that get That was the best one. I couldn't get him out there fast That's enough. good. Uh, no, you keep it. <laughs> no, man, you can keep it. And he was totally cool, too. Like, he couldn't have been cooler about it. He was just like... And then just watch this poor person fumble with 
something that he's never used before and then offered it back to him as if he was like, thanks for letting me borrow your smoke, bro. And, and he was like, he just kind of smiled and he was like, no, nah, man, you can't do it. Yeah, so that's who I nerd over. Thank you very much. <laughs> I fortunately uh, have not, uh, I don't think, had a moment like that that I can think of um, because I avoid them like the plague. Uh, if I see somebody that, that I would, that I ad admire or that I, you know, think I might act anything close to what he did, uh, I won't approach them. In fact, I have this thing, like, uh, people ask, oh, you know, what, what are some actors or some musicians that, that you really admire? And I'll, I'll maybe list a couple, and they're like, well, why don't you, you could probably meet them. And I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> For two reasons. One, I might act like a fool. Two, they might act like a fool. You're stronger than I am. No, I just, I don't, I also don't want that, my perception of them Tarnished, you know, and you never know. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, you know, you guys scored with us. Thank you so much for your question. Her name is Nicole, and I'm gonna sell her out right now for everybody. She says to me, I don't wanna sit down, I'm too short. <laughs> Welcome, Espian family, to Nicole from the Espian family. Is, uh... What is your question? <laughs> um, one of my favorite episodes is French Mistakes, so my question is, <laughs> if, some, if somehow your character was um, to take over your body, and um, yeah. what would be the most noticeable, noticeable difference, and who would be the first person to notice? Again, no, no, no. since I'm the host phone, I'm no. also going to say that question number two is literally, what do you consider your sexiest moves? <laughs> can, we, can we decide which question you answer? Can we, can we ask for Question number two? Yes. Yeah. All right, here we go. This one, this one really puts it over the top. You ready? That's hot. I'm telling you, never fail. <laughs> it works out one time to get people to leave. Uh, so what was the question again? Not about sexist moves? Alright. I feel like I, I lost it. What was the other question? If, if your character was to take over... Take... Hey, let's not go down that road. That's not a sexist move. If you were taken over by your character, what would be the most noticeable 
most no noticeable difference and who would notice first? Ah, uh, I was taken over by, my, like we were taken over by our picture. Oh, fine. Um, uh, for me, probably voice and anybody who talked to me. <laughs> Uh, if I was taken over by my character, I don't think I would talk so much, because Jared talks a lot. Um, hey, hey, take it easy. Go ahead, Ed. It's good. <laughs> what did you say? He didn't say anything. He said this. <laughs> Or if anybody saw me eat, um, Winchester. <laughs> hey, you're not talking as much. You're not Jared Paddle like Wait a minute. You're not sweating as much. <laughs> Are you Sam Winchester? <laughs> and do you have a team of people toweling you off between takes? True story. Yes, he does. Things. Um, Nicole, thank you very much. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> people going to the bathroom. There's 400 urinals in there. <laughs> um, guys, we're going to take a little break, I think, and then we're going to come back and have a panel with a, a, young, a youngster named Richie Spade Jr. Yes. We were thinking, who do we put on that you've seen too much of? I know, me. So we'll be back. Get a breather. Don't hurt each other. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 